friends! Welcome back to Art Therapy with Rose. My name is Rose Comics Turner and I'm glad that you're here with me today. So today I want to talk about observational art. So it's basically what it sounds like. It's kind of just looking at something and drawing it or painting it or whatever. Uh, but it's really, it's about looking at, you know, things that you can actually see and trying to get that down on whatever your canvas is. So this is one of my favorite kinds of art to make, um, as simple as it sounds, um, but there's something about actually pausing to really look at something and kind of, as you're observing it, you're sort of absorbing it. It really helps me to remember details of the moment more, not just what it looks like, but how it feels if I actually take the time to draw what I'm seeing rather than just taking a photo, for example. You know, especially when I travel, I love taking photos as well, um, but there's just something about really putting the time and energy into doing even just a quick sketch of what you see. Um, you really look at the details more and you really, I feel like I absorb more. And it's not about um, being good at drawing, um, but I think everyone should draw. <laughs> uh, just like I said, it just enhances the experience and like even years later looking back on those drawings, like. I feel like I'm more present in the drawings than I am in photos that I take. I read this book called The Old Ways by Robert McFarlane. There is a quote in it that has really stuck with me and resonated with me, um, and I've probably thought about it almost every day since then. The essence of it, I'll paraphrase, our external geographies change our internal geographies. Our external geographies are not just, you know, um, the trees that we're around or the hills or mountains or cities or um, whatever, like outside things. Like that's definitely absolutely a part of it. <clears throat> but it's also, um, you know, the room that we live in, uh, the people that we're around, Right now, in April of 2020, a lot of us probably feel pretty confined by our external landscapes and our external geographies. And maybe we had plans of being in other uh, external geographies and creating other external geographies. And, you know, plans have changed for all of us, pretty much. Um, almost all of us. And so we feel limited, and maybe that limitation is actually changing our internal geographies and changing the way that we feel and operate. The way that we feel and operate is based on our internal geographies, and our internal geographies are mostly based on our external geographies. And so it's all connected. So doing an exercise like this, where you can really pause and look at something, um, and kind of soak it up and all of that, it, it really allows you to appreciate it in a new light um, and it does in effect change your external and internal geographies. So I'll share my own examples of uh, some of my observational art in a moment, but first I want to tell you all about one of my biggest mentors in the field of observational art, Elise Schweitzer. Elise is a fantastic artist, uh, just highly, highly skilled. Any semblance of good structure or composition um, or use of color in storytelling that is visible in my trail comics is pretty much due to her, <laughs> so thank you very, very much, Elise. So there are all kinds of things that you could focus on in observational art, whether it's buildings or small objects or 
plants or whatever. But Elise mostly focuses on people. Um, and so she will draw from these live models um, and statues and things. And she just does a great job of capturing the, um, the gestures and the expressions that are going on. Um, really just by, largely by being true to the, the lights and the shadows, um, and the shapes. And she's just, obviously she's practiced this for a long time. <laughs> um, but you know, there's a lot that you can do even at a simple level. Um, and you can just really dive in and just, just look at something really intently, you know, and see what comes up on the page from that. Okay, so now we're breaking into my own uh, watercolor journal. Um, so this is a little piece that I did when I was in Ireland recently, um, and I just kind of sat and observed these musicians that were all playing together. Um, and um, I actually am pretty proud of this piece and feel good about the way that I captured the feeling. Um, uh, but it was... A very observational piece and I just wanted to give you some examples of you know these other ways that you can do observation um, and uh, so this is uh, Hoth in Ireland um, so I used all these different layers of watercolors um, to try to capture the scene the sky was kind of crazy um, I'll kind of zoom in a little bit so you can see it better um, <clears throat> But this is just, you know, all those layers, as you can see. Um, and I did this over probably like 45 minutes or so. Um, but there's just, there's all kinds of things that you can do with observation and really just use whatever media you have around, whether it's watercolors or pencils or pens or whatever. You can mix things together. Do what you want, you know? <laughs> um, like this one, I wanted to share real quick because um, I kind of had a different method for it, so I didn't sketch it out or anything beforehand. Like it was, it's purely watercolors. Um, I would just kind of use the colors uh, and put them into the shapes of the different things um, and layered a little bit. But it's, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you another example of how you could do that. So, for today's prompt, what I would like you to do is look around a little bit and find something interesting and draw it. Really the only thing is that it has to be something that you can actually see in person. Um, so it could be a person, it could be you in the mirror, it could be someone that it also lives with you. It could be your kitchen, uh, it could be a tree, it could be your neighbor's house, if you can do that without it being creepy, um, or, you know, just the view down your road. Maybe try to think about something that you don't normally look at very much, or maybe you look at it but don't really pay attention to it, or even looking at your shoe. That could be good. A good shoe. There's a lot of character in shoes. Maybe, if you want to, it could be something that you don't normally look at, don't normally think about for very much. Um, and yeah, it could be, it could be a person or a thing or whatever, um, but just something that you can actually see and observe. You know what? There are no real rules in art, so do what you want and I'll catch you in the moment. Uh, add some texture, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's 
So this is what I did for my bit of observational art. I decided to go for a watercolor because uh, that's just a medium that I'm really drawn to right now. Um, and I decided to do a watercolor of this special tree friend of mine. Um, this is a cedar tree that I grew up with. And we are magically back inside. <laughs> the battery died on the camera, so we're back in here. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I did for my observational art piece for today's video. Um, this is, you know, it's nothing too fancy, um, and I did it fairly quickly, but this is just a, a little watercolor um, observation of a an old dear tree friend of mine. A cedar tree that I used to climb very often um, and I can no longer fit through its branches very easily so I can't really climb it anymore sadly uh, but it's still very dear to me so it was nice to spend some time observing it and um, just hanging out with the tree and doing this little watercolor of it um, so you can do really whatever you'd like with yours. You can kind of focus more on colors like I did, um, like the colors and shapes uh, and, and, you know, some of the values. Um, or you can, you know, you can use some pencils and really do more just the light and shadows, um, kind of like Elise does, um, mostly the light and shadows and the shapes. Um, or you can use uh, you can use a pen or a couple of pens. You can even do some cross hatching if you want to. You can get fancy. You can do simple. It doesn't matter. There are no real rules in art. Just have fun and enjoy observing and expanding your external landscapes and nourishing your internal landscapes. So, yeah. I hope you have a good day. I tried to pick a good Elise outfit. This is the best I could do. Hopefully people are picking up on my funny jokes with my outfits that are relevant to each video. This one's for Elise, who has an impeccable sense of fashion.